Proverbs chapter 31. The words of King Lemuel. The prophecy that his mother taught him. All right, so we got another, we got another author in the book of Proverbs. This is the prophecy. Not a problem. It's in the book of Pro prophecy. So we're getting a little example of what prophecy was, and they prophesied. It's a teaching because th there's nothing future tense there. It's outright teaching, and this is from a, a mother that has much wisdom and. He's not Jewish. I don't recognize King Lemuel in any of the Judah in Israel names. So, a Gentile in the book of in the book of uh, Proverbs, his mother. What my son? And what the son of my womb? What? The son of my vows. So here's a mother like Hannah. She vowed. She wanted her son. She made prayer for her. Give not thy strength, king. Or even if he was before a king, manly strength unto women. You know, this nation in the world that gives the power and the authority and the might to having women think that they're males and to go about and do manly jobs. When Peter says, and I don't care if you don't like it or not, the woman is the weaker vessel. There are things that are not to be put into the hands of a woman. That's scripture. There it is. The words of King Lemuel, the prophet that his mother taught him by the, by the Holy Spirit, put it in our Bible. Nor thy ways to that which destroyeth kings. So, with that statement there, we're looking at to the fact is his reign. All king. Don't give the strength unto the woman. Don't give any political power to a woman. There goes England. There goes America. And there's any way that would destroy a king, sin, foolishness, Pride, everything we learn from the book of Proverbs. Ought not to be in the reign of the king. It is not for king. Hold the meal. It is not for kings to drink wine, nor for princes strong drink. The Bible puts a prohibition upon the drinking of alcoholic beverages. Now let's pass that over to the Christian, Revelation chapter 1. Revelation chapter 1. I had the verse, I don't have the, the chapter. Oh, uh, where do I want to start? Verse 5. Revelation 1 5. And from Jesus Christ, who is a faithful witness, the first begotten of the dead, and the prince of the kings of the earth, I see the match what we read, unto him that loved us. Christians and washed us Christians from our sins in his own blood 
and has made us Christians kings and priests unto God his Father. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. It is not for kings, O Lamil, it is not for kings to drink wine, nor princes for strong drink. Christians ought not to drink. Scripture with scripture. Least or lest they drink and forget the law. Drinking hampers memory. And the world's always trying to say, oh, the benefits of a little wine, the benefits of alcohol. And prevert the judgment of any of the afflicted. Alcohol will prevent the judgment. Now I know we're not a nation of kings. We stepped away from England and we didn't want the reign and the power of the monarchy. We have a leadership under presidents in the Senate and the House of Representatives. Okay. As the ruler of our nation called America, I wonder if our representatives, our senators, and our president and vice president, I wonder if they drink alcohol. We're a Christian nation. I'm not talking politics. We're a Christian nation, you know, God of the Bible. One nation under God, in God we trust. How are we doing with that verse? I remember, I forget what the, what the ordeal was. I but remember President Obama, there was something. And the, the, the big thing was that with that gentleman, they sat down together in the Rose Garden and had a beer together. It's not the scriptures. And then I forget his name. I should have it right next to here, but I don't. There's only been one president and his wife where there were no alcohol beverages allowed in the White House or in the office of the presidency. I don't have that name foolish on me. There have been, there have been poems and things written about, oh, you know, the boredom of the drink that we have at the White House. But all to God. I wonder with our new Catholic president, Biden, I wonder there's going to be drinking in the White House when in his official mass there's wine and alcohol. Not very much Bible. Give strong drink unto them are ready to perish. I'm a Christian, I'm dying. John 3, 16. Look at it as a Christian. John 3, 16. See, we're looking at the scriptures with a Christian point of view. And I got accused by a church, you know, I was the all only his one. For God so loved the world that he gave his, gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him. Have you believed on the Lord Jesus Christ? Are you saved? Should not perish but have everlasting life. If you have believed on the Lord Jesus Christ, you're, you, you won't perish. You're absent from the body present with the Lord. Let's go back to Proverbs. So you can't drink alcohol because we're kings and priests. Matter of fact, the law forbade the priest to drink alcohol. Give strong drink unto him that is ready to perish. I'm not going to perish if I believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. Well, you know, Jesus turned the water into wine. He never drank it. You know, drink, drink a little wine for that stomach infirmities. So you got an aching stomach. And for whatever infirmity that Timothy had that Luke told Paul to, to give him a little wine, 
I guarantee there is an alternative to alcohol. It's on the shelves or your friendly pharmacist. You can get a prescription from your doctor without the alcohol. Give strong drink unto him that's ready to perish, and wine unto those that be of heavy heart. And that's supposed to be heavy hearts with love, joy, peace. Rejoice evermore. Give thanks. And in Christian life, let him drink and forget his poverty. We're not, we're not. We got great riches. If you serve the Lord and do right. And remember his misery no more. That's lost man. That's not a Christian. And the Christian to a lost man is not supposed to bring him alcohol. We're supposed to bring him the gospel. Open thy mouth for the dumb that's unable to speak. In the cause of all such as are appointed to destruction. And she's already mentioned judgment. O oh, king, if there is somebody dumb in your kingdom, unable to speak, of no authority to speak, you get off that throne and you defend that man. Come on, really, are you going to see the, the, the president, uh, Trump, step out of the Oval Office in, in Washington, D.C., and go down into a poverty-stricken area and stand up for a, a strong person, a, a weak person. No. And if he does, it's only for a photo shoot and probably a bunch of actors. Open thy, open thy mouth, judge righteously. That's the king. For the for the Israel, this is not Israel. The, it was the priest and the king that were to be judged. Those two harlots that had the baby, and one overslept the baby and switched the baby, came to the king. And plead the cause of the poor and needy. You're not supposed to forsake the poor and needy. You're supposed to help them. And we're going to stop right there.